Hello and welcome to my channel, I went to lose gaming. In today's video, we will be taking a look at the sparkly new Outlander, Aloy, and we'll see how she performs in comparison to two other meta-defining DPS characters. Get ready for a DPS slowdown between Aloy, Amber, and Diona. Before we get started with this clash of titans, it's time to pay some bills, and today's sponsor is Displate. Displate is a one-of-a-kind metal poster designed to capture your unique passions. I got these peanuts plates because it's my wife's birthday soon, and these were the perfect gifts for her. You're sure to find something for anyone out of this huge list of officially licensed displates, like Star Wars, cute animals from Animal Planet, and so much more. They've got everything from classic art like the Mona Lisa to the much more culture version, the Mona Lisa. I've even selected some displays that I recommend, like this Cultured Genshin Impact list, Husbando Impact list, and a When You're Hungry list. Next, we will turn this uninspiring wall into a fabulous expression of her passion. No need for insane tools like a hammer or nails. Just stick these things onto the wall with Dendro, attach a magnet, and now I can put the display on with the power of Electro, aka magnetism. It's interchangeable too. It took me just five minutes to install two large displays. Fantastic. Display also plants a tree for every display plate you buy. They've planted over 14 million trees so far, so you can impress your wife with a perfect gift, support your favorite artist, make your abode look fabulous, and save the planet all at the same time. Smash my link in the description below for a massive discount on your displates today. Huge thanks to today's sponsor, Displate. So earlier I stated in the intro that Amber and Diona are meta-defining DPS characters. That's right, as far as DPS is concerned, Amber has set the bar for some of the lowest expected DPS in the entire game. There have been countless videos on YouTube dragging our poor Outrider through the dirt when it comes to her combat potential. But fret no more our poor berated and battered Outrider, for we have a couple other characters that might be able to compete with you. And interestingly enough, the list of terrible DPS characters is surprisingly long, but I decided to keep this thematically consistent by comparing the worst bow DPS characters in the game. So what other bow characters are known for their terrible DPS? Well, one that comes to mind is Diona. Now don't get me wrong, Diona is one of the best support characters in the entire game. However, when it comes to dishing out damage to slaughter the local fauna in Teyvat, no one really thinks about our favorite child bartender, Diona. And that leaves us with our last contestant in this video. And that contestant is Aloy. Now now, before you come at me with your pitchforks, I have a reason for pitting our favorite Genshin collab character against two of Mondstadt's strongest fighters. Can Aloy freeze the competition or will she be put on ice? Let's quickly go over their builds and damage potentials. For the Overworld Massacre of Innocent Critters, because I'm not going to be sacrificing my precious Arataki Ito boss materials to Aloy, her talents are at a paltry 666. With my Refinement 5 Polar Star, my Blizzard Strayer, and Cryo Resonance, this puts her at a pathetic 58% damage potential. You might be thinking, hey man, that's not cool. To compare Aloy at talent level 6 to the other two characters, well with the power of math and with food and potions, after eating a 320 attack food and cryo potion, this puts our residential non-resident at 76 to 77 percent damage potential for her normal attacks depending on the party resonances. Aloy is at the impressive constellation 0. As for Diona, when she's not busy trying to destroy the entire wine industry to save her alcoholic father, she's annihilating all who dare oppose her with her cat eclysmic charge shots. Diona is using the exact same gear as Aloy, which is the Refinement 5 Polar Star and the Blizzard Strayer set. Her talents are at 9, 12, and 11, and her damage potential for her charge shots are around 74 to 80% throughout this video. It's important to note that Diona has constellations available to her, and my Diona is at constellation 6. And last but potentially the least, we have Amber. While Amber is using the same Refinement 5 Polar Star, Amber won't be using the Blizzard Strayer set. Instead, she is rocking with the two-piece Crimson Witcher Flames and two-piece Shimanawa's Reminiscence for the Overworld. Amber's charge shot damage potential is between 77 to 84 percent damage potential throughout the Overworld portion of this video. My Amber is at an astounding Constellation 6. Will Amber be able to light up the competition, or will she forever be relegated to just being a lighter? 
And now for everyone's favorite part of the video, the disclaimers. Most of these times are done at my level of investment into these characters and at my level of problem solving and skill. This means that barring a couple exceptions, all these characters are constellation 6 with refinement 5 weapons and their talents are all very well leveled. I spent between 30 minutes to an hour on each character so as not to grind infinitely just to save 1 or 2 seconds. Keep in mind that all the times in this video can be improved upon and this is simply one point of reference. There are most certainly oversights, execution errors, and more. Just because character A performs better than character B in this specific scenario does not mean character A is better than character B. Please take everything with a giant grain of salt. Get ready for this DPS slowdown as we take three of the potentially worst DPS characters on a stroll through Tavot. Starting off with everyone's favorite volunteer and sentient salad, the Regis Vines. You'll notice a lot of Polar Star stacks setting up throughout this video. And fortunately for Aloy, she is able to toss her grenade prior to the Regisvine falling down. This allows her to actually gain four coil stacks for her rushing ice state. With a charge attack cancel in between her main attack left mouse button spam, to maintain her Polar Star stack, Aloy was able to destroy the Pyre Regisvine with a Refinement 5 Polar Star in 10.6 seconds. Now in case you weren't aware, Diona's Constellation 4 shortens her charge shot charging time by 60%. With 4 stacks on the Polar Star, Diona is able to output colossal 13,901 damage charge shots every 1 second or so. On top of that, her hold E outputs 5 paws, which each do 6.3 thousand damage for an insane 31.5k single target nuke. It's not surprising that Diona was able to keep up with the residential non-resident Aloy. Everyone's favorite Outrider, aka Amber's, Constellation 2 allows Amber to explode her barren bunnies if you shoot them in the toes. And did you know that you can use her Constellation 1's extra arrow to detonate them as well? By lining up the barren bunnies perfectly, so that the Constellation 1's second arrow will hit both the bunnies' toes, and because the bunnies' toes are basically overlapping with the Regisvine's hitbox, this allows Amber to output a surprising 80 plus thousand damage nuke. Well, Amber blew up the competition here, and as impractical as this is in pretty much any other situation, we can't help but give our favorite underdog Outrider the win here. Next let's try this 3 phase boss fight, Child. <laughs> Man oh man, this is why you don't use Aloy as a main DPS character. Aloy is completely unable to rely on three of her bomblets to hit child. Fortunately for Aloy though, her burst and her bomb are both quick methods of outputting a reasonable amount of damage, and due to the low energy cost of her burst, she was able to use it twice against the pre-cutscene child. <laughs> Now this is where tragedy struck, and Aloy needs to rely on her normal attack damage to deal with third phase child. Not only is rushing ice difficult to obtain, even when she has it, her auto attack damage is lacking to say the least. <laughs> After an agonizingly difficult fight, Aloy dispatched a child in 56.42 seconds. 
Next, we have a really fair fight between this literal cat child and that child, a freaking Fatui Harbinger that can summon a huge water whale. Diona had a slower pre-cutscene performance than Aloy. This is because for the second phase, Diona no longer has her burst up. And with the DPS build, Diona is not able to get her burst up again for the second phase because she has no energy recharge. Without her burst, well, Diona's charge shot DPS is very lacking to say the least, but her hold E still does a fair amount of damage. For the third phase, now that Diona has her burst back, she's able to lay down the pain and obliterate the 11th Fatui Harbinger with her machine gun charge attacks. Who would have thunk that a cat child could beat a man child? And now for Amber's admittingly stellar performance, at least in comparison to the other two. Amber is able to output a lot of raw pyro damage if she's able to connect her burst and both her Baron Bunny's manual detonations. Thus, she was able to blow up pre-cutscene child much more quickly than I expected. Hopping on over to the third form, this is another story, as third form child smacks the poor bunnies around, and it was nothing short of tons of attempts and a miracle for so many barren bunnies to connect in this run. We have another fight where Amber took home the trophy. Last but not least, we have the most reliable punching bag in Teyvok, the Primo Geovishab, aka our favorite giant rock frog. Now, I don't think I need to break down the entire fight for all three of them, because then we'd be here all day, but I will point some interesting stuff out. All three of their times were remarkably similar, but Amber actually didn't need a second celestial rock shower or whatever it's called. What this means is that Amber actually ended up doing around 10 to 15% more damage to the Primo Geovishap than the other two did. And when it comes to sustained raw damage output, Diona is, funnily enough, very comparable to Aloy. While Aloy's burst and elemental skill have decent DPS, her auto attacks are among some of the worst in the entire game, being unreliable to activate, having low uptime, and finally, when you actually do have it, being very mediocre in DPS. It appears that these three colossal titans are somewhat neck to neck when it comes to their raw elemental damage output. So next let's try a team for each of them. First the Primo Geo Visha. If you've been watching my videos for some time, you'll know that I often make Amber nuke things. Since this nuke is admittingly rather difficult to execute, I just used an old clip of Amber two-shotting the Primo Geovishap here with her Baron Bunnies. Looks like the bunnies ensure that our favorite giant rock frog couldn't live happily ever after. And this is Aloy's time to shine. With her decent skill and burst damage, both being meltable and with her somewhat high cryo application, Aloy was able to double melt her grenade and her burst, and then tag the Primo Geovishap with cryo, thus allowing Xiangling to melt her pyronados for a significantly faster clear time than Diona. 
And sadly, this is where Diona's role as a non-DPS character shows. Diona does not have the same explosive multiple damage that both Aloy and Amber have available to them. Nonetheless, Diona still did an impressive 150,000 damage in a single charge shot. But did you know that Diona's charge shots have the standard ICG? This means that you cannot melt all her charge shots. They really didn't want Melt Diona, Power Creeping, Melt Gone You. And I feel it is my judiciary responsibility to put this into perspective. A top tier character like Raiden can effortlessly one shot the Primo Geovish app with a full team. So that leaves us with the obligatory Abyss 12 runs. Now, admittingly, I wasn't able to get highly optimized Abyss 12 runs for these characters, at least not any runs that I was really happy with. I would describe trying to get competitive speed run times with these characters as nothing short of torture. Of course, I could put them with other DPS characters like, for example, Raiden, Bennett, and Eula, plus one of these characters, but at that point, it's not a run with these three characters. Heck, even these runs with Xiangling for Diona and Aloy and Xing Cho for Amber makes these barely runs with these characters. Anyway, I'll let their Abyss runs play in the background while I provide some key takeaways from these results. Looking at this chart, we can see that the three of them are astoundingly competitive for their overall performances. It's super important to note that if not for their constellations, Diona and Amber would perform much worse. Diona's Constellation 4 provides her with a massive increase to her on-field DPS. However, Aloy is just marginally better than Diona as a main DPS character. On top of that, Diona is an incredibly good support character. Let's say, hypothetically, that you did build your Diona as a DPS character, she provides you with a very similar amount of team damage, while also providing amazing support. However, Aloy does have her strengths as a multiple nuker. Since she's able to triple melt her damage by melting a shard shot, grenade, and burst in quick succession. But beyond that, Aloy provides nearly nothing else for the team. Rosaria, Kaya, and Chongyun are all great multiple nukers to varying degrees that all provide something else for your team, besides just a little bit of damage. Next, let's take a look at the times for these highly unoptimized Abyss 12 runs. The only difference between the two teams for Diona and Aloy are literally Diona and Aloy, who also both had the exact same builds as the Overworld Showcase and used the exact same teammates of Bennett, Kazuha, and Xiangling. We can see that while a lower damage potential Aloy was 2.7% faster than Diona's team, this is a comically small difference within the margin of error. Both Diona and Aloy's damage contribution to the team is fairly small in comparison to the other three characters. As for Amber, well, our expectations for her were already rock bottom. And while my Amber certainly overperformed in this video thanks to her Constellation 6, which most people do not have, this is not looking good for Aloy who also has almost no support capabilities besides generating some cryo particles. Amber actually has some niche support capabilities for whales by being the fastest LG procker, the most reliable way to double vape Xing Cho, and by being a good pyro applicator for characters like Hu Tao. While I don't recommend Amber for non-whales, Amber has her uses outside of being a terrible DPS character. With all that being said, of course you can still use whoever the heck you want. Even a DPS Diona can 9 star Abyss 12, so just play with who you want and however you want. But do keep in mind that newer Abyss 12s have had increasing HP pools, and perhaps we'll see even higher HP pools in the future. Anyway, if you think Aloy is cool, then by all means use her, invest into her etc. Even the worst characters in Genshin Impact are still very viable today. Let me know what you think about these three insane DPS characters. Who do you think won this competition? Also, if you were planning to get a display anyway, which by the way they have a ton of amazing Genshin Impact displays, go smash my sponsorship link down below. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.